almost every single one of you have said, Oh my goodness, why so much homework? Well, you're right. Homework amounts have been increased. According to Clifton B. Parker, a Stanford University researcher, too much homework can seriously affect your health. Some side effects include sleep deprivation, exhaustion, headaches, weight loss, and stomach problems. Homework can also give you a lot of stress. Clifton B. Parker has done some research on students that go to Stanford. His studies show that 56% of students say that homework is a primary source of stress. Not only that, but homework is now cutting into your free time. Researchers assess homework load by asking students how many hours of homework they do on a typical day, leaving out breaks, texting, etc. Students reported spending three or more hours on homework. Molly Galloway of researcher from Lewis and Clark University says that students are forced to do homework rather than playing outside, playing the sport, and developing a new talent or skill. And people wonder why kids are getting fat. They have no time to play outside or do any physical activity. Now we've all heard our teachers say that homework is to help us understand the concept and practice it, and I agree. But according to Denise Pope, a Stanford graduate of education, Homework should have a purpose and benefit, and it should cultivate learning and development. But homework nowadays discourages learning and instead promotes doing homework simply just to get points. Harvey Daniels, an education professor, agrees with Denise Pope. He says that homework is driving kids away from learning, and that whatever interest kids did have in school is now gone. So now children everywhere are losing that one thing or that one subject that they absolutely loved in school because of homework. Students rated homework usefulness by two questions. How, how useful is homework for helping you understand the concept? And how, help you, how useful is it for helping you practice it? These items were used, to, were used to form a homework usefulness scale from one being not useful at all to five being very useful. Results show that students rated homework usefulness as somewhat useful, and only 6% rated homework as very useful for learning and preparation. But it's not the homework that's causing the lack of interest, it's the amount that they're expected to do. And the solution is so simple. Don't give out so much homework. If the school board is going to increase the amount of time in school, then so be it. Because that just gives us students more time to understand the concept and practice it, rather than getting a boatload of homework that you have no clue on what it's asking you to do. Another way of solving homework overload is to have the option in school study sessions. For example, in school study sessions will give students the opportunity to ask questions, additional practice, and homework support. I know that homework overload is a big problem in education. And the answer is sitting right in front of you. Decrease the amount of time, uh, decrease the amount of homework, and have the free time to do whatever you want. Or spend every night up till 10 o'clock trying to finish your homework, and then waking up exhausted in the morning. Think about it. The choice is yours. And today, I'd like to talk to you about hands on activities. Worksheets. 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 In the past, I've had a teacher who only assigned class worksheets. She never even tried to involve interactive activities, which would be fun for students. They were not only bored, but they didn't care about what they were learning. Many students in our class didn't do very well on tests, since we never really reached the level of understanding that was necessary. Over the past few years, students have become overwhelmed with paper pencil assignments. Not only can they be boring, but the overdose of them can actually negatively affect student learning. A bored student is not a learning student. Whatever happened to hands on activities? These are things that you actually do to spend or read about. I believe that there is a lack of hands on activities in the classroom. I have two solutions that can help to alleviate the problem. One deals with the actual activities themselves, while the other addresses how better teacher training can be very beneficial to implement these things. More 
interactive lessons need to be added to every student. One example of this would be labs. What I mean by labs are activities that students can do to have data or results at the end of them. For instance, instead of reading about tornadoes, the students could actually make a simulation of one. I've done this before. Everyone in the class had a great time, and we learned a lot. That way, the students were actually doing, not just reading. If elections are being studied, the students could actually hold an election in the classroom. Hands-on activities are much better than work sheets because they give children a better understanding of the material. According to the article, hands-on activities for children are by Tony Evans. The more hands-on activities are implemented in students' learning, their learning and growth rapidly increase. Also, according to the website edweek.org, Purdue University conducted a study. The students were split up into two groups and taught the same lesson about water quality. One group was taught through lectures, textbooks, and the other was taught by actually building a water purification device. Further evidence did show that the second group had a deeper understanding of the concepts than the first. In order to incorporate more hands-on activities into the classroom, the teachers have to be okay with it. Some teachers may still be set in their ways, relying on lectures and worksheets. This needs to change. Although paper and pencil assignments do play a role in learning, teachers should not be using them as their primary teaching tools. This may have been good when teachers first started teaching, but it currently is not one of the best strategies. Some teachers may be reluctant at first, but as they see your students enjoy learning and not being bored all the time, they might adapt to these new ways. Teachers have also been trained. According to the North Central Regional Educational Laboratory, all teachers <coughs> should have goals that can be ongoing learning and professional development. Also, looking to improve your practice by providing hands-on learning experiences in the classroom. There are many online resources teachers can use for examples of fun activities. According to David L. Horn and Peter Valeria, the authors of Perspective of Hands-On Learning, studies have shown that students have even shown an improved attitude when more relaxed activities are incorporated into the learning. According to David L. Horn and Peter Valeria, the authors of Perspective of Hands-On Learning, studies have shown that students have even shown an improved attitude when more relaxed activities are incorporated into the learning. If teachers agree to do this, they'll be having fun while teaching, students will be having fun while learning, and the students will leave the classroom filled with even more knowledge. I believe that incorporating more hands-on activities would be very beneficial for the education. I, myself, was lucky enough to have teachers like this who included a vast amount of fun and educational events into my learning. These were some of the most pleasurable classes for me because I felt more like a participant than an observer. It's a very simple equation. Learning by doing plus Better teacher training equals a much more important <coughs> classroom environment. No, Mom, I'm still finishing it. Have you ever had these moments happen to you? Because I know it's happened to me. Constantly having my parents nag on you if you're done with the homework you started hours ago. Some may even ask, what's the point of homework? And yes, I know you probably asked this question one or many times this past school year. Homework can cause physical problems as well as stress. Also, homework may be the reason why kids are failing tests. And lastly, homework means less time for family, friends, and extracurricular <coughs> pursuits. I'm not going to go on and on about why homework is necessarily considered bad, but we need to try and fix our homework dilemma before it has a negative impact on us. Denise Pope, a senior lecturer at the Stanford University School of Education, has found that homework has a negative effect on well-being and behavior. The researchers studied 4,317 students in 10 high-performing California communities. Along with their data, Pope and her colleagues researched the students' perspectives on homework. Most students in these schools completed 3.1 hours of homework a night, and it was found that the students who increased in hours of homework a night were more likely to have well-behavior engagement in school, but also had more academic stress and physical health problems. In result of this, what teachers can do is make homework more fun and relaxed. Instead of doing a reading log, your teacher should just let you read for fun. A local teacher turned the chore of homework into an enjoyable task for students, which was a success for him and his students. Homework is the reason I'm failing, says a high school senior. <coughs> Frustration with too much homework can lead to lower grades. For the student to take a math class that is overly advanced for his or her ability, 
just because it will meet a college eligibility standard may lead to frustration and failure for that student, according to Learning RX. The frustration with too much homework will lead to failure for that student and won't necessarily be the student's fault in most cases. Students with low grades may feel as if what they're learning is simply too hard for them. Education should not be the business of promoting frustration, claims writers at Learning RX. A resolution to this problem may involve big change, but is proven to work. This is limiting each class's homework to 10 minutes a night per subject. This way, students aren't overwhelmed with hours of homework. This is proven to help students remember and be able to pick up and understand new concepts. Both the survey data and student responses indicate that students were, that were spending too much time on homework were not meeting their developmentary needs or cultivating other life skills, according to researchers. Students were more likely to drop activities, not see friends and family as much as they like, and not pursue hobbies they enjoy. <clears throat> Let's be real. It's disappointing not being able to see our friends and family as much as they like. And most families are lucky to spend 30 minutes for fun. A local teacher turned the chore of homework into an enjoyable task for students, which was a success for him and his students. Homework is the reason I'm failing, says a high school senior. <coughs> Frustration with too much homework can lead to lower grades. For the student to take a math class that is overly advanced for his or her ability, just because it will meet a college eligibility standard may lead to frustration and failure for that student, according to Learning RX. The frustration with too much homework will lead to failure for that student and won't necessarily be the student's fault in most cases. Students with low grades may feel as if what they're learning is simply too hard for them. Education should not be the business of promoting frustration, claims writers at Learning RX. A resolution to this problem may involve big change, but is proven to work. This is limiting each class's homework to 10 minutes a night per subject. This way, students aren't overwhelmed with hours of homework. This is proven to help students remember and be able to pick up and understand new concepts. Both the survey data and student responses indicate that students were, that were spending too much time on homework were not meeting their developmentary needs or cultivating other life skills, according to researchers. Students were more likely to drop activities, not see friends and family as much as they like, and not pursue hobbies they enjoy. <clears throat> Let's be real. It's disappointing not being able to see our friends and family as much as they like. And most families are lucky to spend 30 minutes with their kids after all of the homework they have. When I think back on my childhood, there is no way I had this much, says Susan Volk, a mother comparing her homework to her child's. The answer to this is teacher, teachers should post a review sheet about what they learned in class each day and help them remember what they learned in class that day, so homework wouldn't be necessary. Blog.kqed.org found that sharing information and connecting with others, whether we know them or not, has been proven to be a powerful tool in learning. Homework can cause physical problems as well as stress. Students are more likely to fail tests and quizzes and don't have much family, friend, and extracurricular activity time. Homework is a touchy subject that all students have problems with, and we've all dealt with homework stress. If you put my solutions to effect, a lot can happen. And we will be stress-free and not have to worry when a teacher hands us a homework. Don't forget my solutions. Having homework be more relaxed and fun, limiting homework to 10 minutes a night per subject, and putting a review sheet online for students to look at. If you take my solutions and look into more, we can beat the homework. Vanessa! Oh, I have to go. I have to finish that homework. Your teacher is going on and on and on, lecturing about a topic. You look around the room and you see two, maybe even three people about to fall asleep. One or two kids in the back of the room are on their phones on Instagram or Snapchat. You look at the clock and you still have 30 minutes left to class. At the end, almost everyone learns nothing. Why? Because learning in class was boring. This might be similar to what one of your classes looks like, and this probably has happened to you before. This is just one of the big problems in education today. If you go around and ask a few students what are some problems in education today, they might say financial issues, or how schools have way too, put, way too much technology or too little. One problem in education today is that students are getting bored in class while learning. So to solve this, teachers need to make class more interactive. Today, many students are getting bored in class because some teachers are talking way too much. Teachers use many methods to teach their students, and one of those are lectures. Michael Linson is an author of several books for teachers, and he has taught every grade K-12 for the past 24 years. He wrote an article titled, How to Improve Classroom Management by Talking Less. He says that too much talking has the opposite effect and makes classroom management more difficult. Here's why. A 
It causes students to tune you out. It lessens the meaning and impact of your words. It communicates to students that you don't trust them. And it causes tension, distraction, and rebe rebelliousness. All of this is true. When teachers talk too much, students tend to get bored sitting there in front of you. So I'm telling them to not listen to you. Mary Anderson writes education articles, and she wrote one titled Advantages and Disadvantages of the Lectures in Middle School and High School. She says, lecturing is, is not usually as interactive as other forms of instruction, such as cooperative learning. This lack of interaction may not work well for some middle and high school students, especially those with shorter attention spans or those who are easily distracted. This proves my point because the lack of interaction causes the students to get bored and daydreamy. The solution to solve this problem is simple. Teachers need to make class more interactive. When teachers make class interactive, students won't get bored. I mean, would you rather be in your seat taking notes from your teacher's lecture or working on a poster about what you learned as a group? I'd choose the second one, and I'm sure you would too. Janelle Cox is an, education, is an elementary education expert and she wrote an article on About.com entitled Cooperative Learning Tips and Techniques. She says, Cooperative learning is a teaching strategy classroom teachers use to help their students process information more quickly by having them work in small groups to accomplish a common goal. This is good for the students because they won't get bored while doing this and because they're working together and learning at the same time. Another way to make class interactive is to incorporate technology into the lessons. These days, everyone is using technology, so why not use it for the good? Janelle Cox wrote another article on About.com titled, How Classroom Apps Can Be Useful Tools in the Classroom. She says, research has shown that using technology in the classroom can improve student learning and engagement. This proves my point because using an overhead projector may get boring for some students. So instead, give them an iPad or a laptop and have them go on educational games and websites like Mathematier, Brain Pop, Sundog, or Five Dice Order of Operations. These are just a few ways to make learning interactive in your classroom, and there are many more. In conclusion, the problem that students are getting bored in class can be solved by making class more interactive. When teachers do this, students won't get bored, which leaves everyone happy. What we need to see in the future is more interaction in class. Teachers don't want to see their students falling asleep in class, missing out on important information. And teachers don't want to see their, hear their students saying, Ugh, this is the most boring class and teacher ever. What we need to hear is, yay, this class is the best and the teacher is awesome. So the next time you are in class, ask your teacher if you can work on something in a group or if you can test your skills on an educational game. And remember, when you hear snoring, class might be boring. <laughs> the type of problems that students are having trouble with. A problem that mostly pops into my mind a lot is how schools are not very explorative. Ex the meaning of exploration is the action of travel and of to an unfamiliar area in order to learn about it. Exploration is very important, especially for young adolescents like me. Exploration can give students a really easy way to challenging topics. Research shows that the exploration found within learning can not only help students with challenging topics, but also helps not only for adult life, but also in terms of vocation, such as job or occupations, and to be better family members and citizens. A benefit for many students is how exploratory activities actively engage students allow them to learn new skills and try out new ways of thinking. This is an even better reason for why every class that students have should include exploratory topics. A solution to this problem is to include at least two more field trips during the school year. New and improved experiments being able to find out so many things that students never thought they could, and so much more. For example, my 10-year-old brother is labeled with having a learning disorder, and he eventually failed the grade. This year, he went to Pepper Academy and has done lots of improvement. Each week, he brings in at least one project that tells me that he has done experiments that even you were 
thought high school was my favorite. And I don't like to think of it as my brother has a learning disorder. I like to think of it as the teachers who have taught him before have failed him because they could not teach him through exploration. And here he is today, being better than ever, getting an honor roll, such as this, left and right. Hands on activities help students understand topics more than they would without being explored. As I have said before, it is important to explore into any subject, not just art or drama or etc. For many students, middle school may be their last chance to explore. Some schools have actually taken action to this problem. For example, St. Charles Middle School students have more control over their exploration classes. I think that more schools should take action at this as well, not just for any subject. I think that teachers <coughs> have a standard of how explorative they should be. As you can see from the evidence given, Schools and all should be more explored, encouraging students to select from different options of after school programs, devoting entire days to exploratory activities at least once a month, and so much more. As Edith Winter said, exploration is the engine that drives innovation, and innovation drives economic growth. So let's all Common Core, Common Core, and Common Core. We all hear it. We all hear it's good, but we also hear it's bad. So which one is it? What is it? Where did it come from? Let's start with the basics. It was developed by two trade associations in 2009. Neither association included educators. Common Core is a shift to national standards as opposed to states. A memorandum of agreement was signed by 48 states in 2009. This was a bribe. It was a voluntary agreement. But let's dig a little bit. <coughs> Most uh, state, states signed to keep the federal one. The role of the states had been completely eliminated. National groups developed standards for creating tests, training, and uh, textbooks, as well as teacher and student tracking. Groups included American Stories, Student Achieved Partners, and Achieve Inc. Great news for associations who really understand education. There are many concerns with Common Core and who would feel the biggest impact, administrators, students, teachers, as well as parents. Administrators such as principals and superintendents are responsible for the success and the failure of the school. Therefore, they will need a solid plan for teacher development, preparation for technology and curriculum, and encourage support from parents. Administrators who aren't prepared and schools perform poorly could lose their jobs. Teachers in common core subjects will need to incorporate new expectations. They will need to they will be responsible for the, for the failure and the success of the students. If not, they too could lose their jobs. This pressure, stress, and scrutiny will create teacher burnout, leaving the field and or retirement. As pressure improves for test scores increasing, Art, music, and PE could be eliminated. <coughs> Money will be put towards core subjects. And then there are the students. Instant results are not realistic. High school and middle school will, feel that will have a harder time. Pre-K will have the easiest. The true impact will take at least 12 to 13 years. This is a total disservice to older students. Parents will have more, they will have to be more involved to see their kids succeed. It will require more parent-teacher communication, supervision of homework, and to stress the importance of education. Not all parents will participate. This is a false expectation. If the school system does not need to reinvent the wheel, if great education was once provided to previous generations, common core state standards adds nothing to what is already known about teaching today. If CCSS must be implemented, start with pre-K. Do not disrupt established older students in middle school and high school. <coughs> Establish the basics, reading, writing, and math. The foundation for technical and analytical skills in the global environment. St 
students be aware vocational and technical careers are just as important as college. This venue must be available as well. If Common Core does not succeed, billions of taxpayers' money will be spent for nothing, and the American public education system will be confusing, centrally controlled by federal government, and both produce an uneducated generation. Local control over education must be maintained. We must ask ourselves, if Common Core is, if this program is so successful, why can't they tell time, spell, or count money? Why can't they do math without a calculator? And why can't they spell or write in cursive? Science has expanded greatly, but the scientific method is still the same. The only winners of CCSS will be the tax, will be the creators who put taxpayers' dollars in their in their pockets. The losers will be us. One size does not fit all. Thank you for your time. Today, students all around the country are suffering from something called excessive testing. Did you know that 26% of high school students drop out in their first year because of this problem? This means that 7,000 kids are dropping out each week. This is a major problem that we need to do something about. I've interviewed teachers from all around Pasco County, and they all agree with me that this is a major problem for schools, and stress at a young age can cause very called premature problems such as therapy and even ulcers. My personal experience, I've been up till 2 a.m. studying for tests. And that's even after I've done extracurricular activities such as sports and even after I've done homework. According to usanews.org, this the Department of Education only provides 10% of funding for standardized tests such as the MCAT. This means that 90% of of our state's <coughs> test, um, funding for tests come, are coming from our state's pocket. Well, if we cut these tests, maybe we can have more room to have for money so we can buy stuff, things such as computers, new textbooks, and stuff so we can make our our less technology pub city schools so we can as make them as well as our private schools who have more <coughs> um, <coughs> access to these better technologies. Did you know that the USA is the number one tested nation in, in all throughout the world? And we don't even have year-round schooling, such as China and Japan and other countries around the world. Also, teachers have to look at curriculum for the kids that are on the bottom and on the top of the list to teach the kids around the cost of learning so they can pass their tests. Why do the kids have to suffer their own top and the bottom? Just because the kid is a little more smarter? Maybe they pay attention a little bit more in class. Why are they at the summer? And why are the kids at the bottom of the summer? Just because they need a little bit more help. A solution to this problem is that we can we should cut all these tests and we can have three tests throughout the year. A beginning test, a middle test, and end of the year test. This will help teachers get all the curriculum that they need throughout the whole year. So all the students can have the same amount of curriculum. And so we can all students can have the same amount of curriculum. And all students can have the same and the core education. That's what a school is all about for me. Well, um, students all teachers all students, students do not also do not stress as well. Teachers also stress as much as students. They they have their principal and corporate spring on their neck saying, oh, if your students do not have 70% um, passing on this test, then you'll be fired. I don't, teachers also have a limited budget, so they also need the support for their families. Why do, why should teachers have to suffer? Just, be, I don't get that. I think that's the teachers, if we call all these tests, then all, all the teachers will, will have more jobs for teachers. I, I think that's what education Teachers, uh, teachers are just, um, I hope I have summarized my topics to you today, and I hope that with my technology and my ideas that we can have a better education and a better tomorrow for students, and thank you. Homework, homework, and more homework. What's the first thing you think about when it comes to homework? Fun? No. Overwhelming and stressful? Yes, homework has made my life miserable and takes up too much time. When I get home from school, I get a quick stack and go straight to my room. 
I end up doing homework that feels like years. Instead of spending quality time with my family, I'm stuck in my room until 10 o'clock at night. Sometimes I'm stuck in my room until 2 o'clock in the morning finishing homework. Why do we have to do more work after six hours of school? Homework is a waste of time to students. According to the research I found that with homework, students won't have time for themselves, no quality family time, no out of school activities, and they won't have time to study for tests. Not only does homework waste students' time, but they waste teachers' times as well. Based on my findings, teachers have to plan the homework, explain it, grade it, and tell everyone why and what they got right or wrong on the homework. Homework keeps teachers and students up all night. Teachers have to spend all night planning the homework and making many copies for all their students, and then they have to grade all of them. Students have to do the homework for all their classes and find time to study for tests. Some people may argue that homework is good for extra practice learning. However, education isn't the only important activity. Physical activity, play, time to ourselves, and family time are just as important as all learning life skills, but in different ways. Homework is all pain and no gain. I know I'm not the only one that experienced this, but after a long day of learning, I have to work hard to get at home, doing many hours of homework. When I'm finally done doing all of my homework from all of my classes, I don't get that much time to study for a big test and end up not having enough sleep. The next day comes along, and since I wasn't fully prepared for the test, I end up having a bad grade. It couldn't get any worse, right? That's where I was wrong. The homework that I put a lot of effort and time into didn't even get graded. The only credit I got is a bad grade on the test, not enough sleep, and many, many hours of my life has been wasted. Now I have a question. How can we stop this aggravating homework battle? That's a no-brainer. We have to abolish all the homework. We can start out by convincing teachers to give us less homework. Soon, at schools, teachers can teach their lesson and then give students classwork to do instead of homework. According to the research I found, when students have hours of homework, they don't get enough sleep, sunlight, and exercise. Imagine how much time we'll have without homework. Imagine coming home with a smile, knowing that there's no homework. Too bad it only exists in a parallel universe. Without enormous amounts of homework, teachers and students would have more free time. Teachers won't have to waste time on planning, explaining, and grading homework. Students will have more time to study for tests, therefore their grades will improve. Students can use the free time they have to relax, spend time with family and friends, join clubs, hobbies, sports, etc. Without homework, kids have time to be kids. And always remember that homework is that one word you can't spell without ill. To conclude, I have a dream that students will be able to have free time after school. Is this going to stay as a dream or is this going to become a reality? Who knows? <coughs> Only time to tell. Thank you for listening and now I need all of you to make my dream come true. When my sister Jessica was seven, she was diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder, which means she has a wide range of impairments from then on. She has been in special education classes. Since Jessica was diagnosed, she was supposed to get a special diploma or certificate of completion. Now that Jessica is 17 and graduating next year, my family is having to second guess her future. Jessica's future is like a child, constantly needing supervision. In Mississippi, about 20% of students ages 16 through 24 year olds who have disabilities are not in school or have jobs. Also, there are 25,000 mentally disabled homeless people in Florida, <coughs> says the U.S. Census Bureau. Most disabled students don't have the intellectual abilities to get a standard diploma or go to college. After all they worked for, special education students are not going to be able to get the diploma they deserved and worked for. Even if the special education kids can get a diploma and graduate, that doesn't guarantee a job that can support them. 23% of special <coughs> education students get regular diplomas, and 60% get a certificate of completion. And they aren't even recognized by colleges or employers, says the Clarion Ledger Review. People who grow up with disabilities don't have it easy. As a child, Jessica was bullied a lot. 
and with her disabilities, it has affected the way she reacts around people. Although switching from a special diploma to a standard diploma is difficult, the transition can be done. It is still important that special needs kids get the same opportunities as standard diploma kids do. In conclusion, many families like my own are having to second guess their children's future. I propose we make special education schools to make sure that they're given equal opportunities. Also, there should be made job opportunities that can be specially given to special education people. I felt overwhelmed and majorly stressed by any type of work. So are many students in school. Homework is often being handed out in huge quantities, and it has to be stopped or students are just going to get more and more stressed. School boards and teachers around the world are beginning to realize how much stress homework puts on all students. Mark Barnes stated, I stopped giving out homework altogether. Kids will do things academically when they see value, not when other people try to force it. This is what has been said by so many teachers, and more and more are joining the cause. Sarah Bosfeld of the National Post has had many teachers talking about how much this is a problem. Homework, most simply, puts too much stress on students. Some nights, so much work is given out that by the time they are finished, you can never get truly a good night's sleep. And then when you actually get into bed, I'm sure all of you have had this problem. You're just sitting there thinking, have I finished everything? Is there anything left I forgot to do? Homework is a problem, and in many words, you might not guess it, but it has physical problems too. In studies from Is Too Much Homework Bad for Kids' Health, uh, reporters have found that stomach problems, headaches, along with other physical along with other physical problems, have been found. Students most simply, cannot handle all the stress that comes with them, and it's showing. There has also been reported behavioral problems. Now, if you want to see the kid that you've always known, you need to stop him. And if not, you will just watch as your kid becomes a child you don't even know. He can become socially deprived. Now, I understand that many say homework reinforces what you learn in class. But if you're doing so much work that you find it useless, it takes out all of your motivation. To sum it all up, homework is a problem which causes stress along with other physical and mental disabilities. I believe homework has to be stopped, or the problems students have will just be getting worse and worse. If all educators just stopped for a second, and assessed the work they were giving them, I believe everyone would be a little less stressed and a little happier. All over the United States, there are millions of students learning to become successful men and women. Current protocols have students dealing with overwhelming standardized tests, making students have massive burdens on them in addition to their assigned homework. In reality, when you look at it, we are still using the same platform of education learning skills, and objectives that we have used for many years. Studies in Norway state that their student IQ levels are some of the best in the world. This information brings up the question of how can some tiny country surpass the almighty USA in academics. Through extensive research and development, Norway has adopted a teaching method called kinesthetic learning. This means that people learn by observing someone performing a skill and afterwards imitating the demonstrated actions and repeat those steps until learned. Scientists say that kinesthetic curriculums relieve stress on students because instead of doing <coughs> countless exams, they do group projects and show what they know through intriguing assignments. Although many would argue that repetitive reviews, quizzes, and standardized tests are more effective, Considering the obvious need for improvements, we need to examine an alternate education style for proactive solutions to bring the USA to a higher student IQ level. 
As the millennial generation looks around the globe, we see opportunities to improve America's education by getting us, the kids, more involved in the classroom. There are those that would ask, why should we change the curriculum? Upon taking a closer look in our home school, Charles S. Rushi, there's always some kind of standardized test to do to determine our academic level. It almost seems like our post-school study time is included with the daily learning of new material in the classroom, along with regular review of previous day's work. An excellent example of kinesthetic learning my math teacher uses regularly to get us involved is to put an equation up on the board and ask the class who can solve it by challenging everyone to answer it first. Immediately, the class goes crazy trying to outdo the person next to them, getting all the kids involved and interested. We also do group packets where several people work together to complete a series of questions. With these kinds of teaching methods, we can see how other people solve questions. This way, we can mimic these actions and begin to understand the lesson by a hands-on manner. Research shows if something interests a kid in school, they will work harder and more efficiently. This idea, combined with physically doing a learned skill, most students can subliminally remember more because that student has actually practiced the skill. When research shows that the student understands what they're learning by way of test taking and repetitive review as a form of reasonable academic measurement, along with classroom book work, which helps the students remember the information, why should it be changed? But I'm not saying to remove the information and knowledge. I'm saying that we should replace the dull, exhausting ways of learning with more current ways to learn. As an honor student, I, I tend to remember the information more in an interactive way because it's an interesting way. We can show this understanding through exciting projects such as science experiments, writing plays and language arts, and doing group projects in math and American history. The success of this curriculum being highly effective is right in front of us. Other students have, other countries have changed, so why haven't we? It's clear that this new learning technique works. Kinesthetic learning gives the students the ability to physically practice their skills and memory, which makes students strive to do much, much more. When you think about it, when you're having fun, why stop? Actually demonstrating what you know proves that you know what has been learned. It also sets examples for other students. In short, the kinesthetic method is effective. It lets students exceed in performance and gets the students up and hands off, rather than the constant boredom from the mini tests and book work. The kinesthetic method shows a better way for the many students in the USA to have less stress and more fun learning in the classroom resulting in a much needed improvement to current rankings amongst other nations academically. Thank you. Okay. If you're a student, you've probably spent countless hours doing homework and studying. If you're a teacher, you've probably been told over and over how important standards are and why you could lose your job if you don't teach them. If you're a parent or a guardian, you know how much of a struggle standardized testing is. Standardized testing has negative effects on students, teachers, and parents. It uh, takes away teaching time, they're not beneficial, and they just don't motivate teachers or students to learn. In a recent study by the Colorado Education Association, 62% of teachers don't even like standards. Uh, the CEA also reports that teachers spend approximately 16 hours a week on testing related activities. The CEA also surveyed teachers about the overall beneficial factors and the only particular assessment that scored a proficient 3 out of 5 was the end of course exams to make sure you know what you learned on the other tests. The New York Education Department quotes that 63% of teachers and administrators that they uh, reported that the focus on testing had added to the student's level of stress. Now, stress is probably the worst way to motivate people. I made a bad grade on the test last semester and it was hard to get out of it because I didn't know what the material was covered. So that caused me to do bad on all the other tests because I still didn't learn the material. Now, why do we take tests? It all comes down to money. Uh, the U.S. government spends six billion dollars every year on educating students and so big companies like Pearson and Discovery Ed 
they want to make some of that money, so they will continue to make the test harder and suggest that the students take more in order to make money. Now, there are several methods that would fix this problem. The most promising, in my opinion, is the Foxfire method. It fixes all the problems that standardized testing caused in the first place. It adds teaching time. There are proven results that this method works, and it motivates teachers and students to do well. It improves teaching time because the teacher serves as a collaborator. I've been told countless times by teachers that they can't teach what they want to teach because they don't have time. This adds time because they can teach you the skills in order to complete a project. A group of high schoolers created the best-selling magazine called The Foxfire by using this method. Um, their teacher, named Elliot Wigington, threw out the textbook because it did not motivate their students. The students didn't want to learn. So he said instead, make a magazine. The students worked together and they interviewed the community. They did research. They wrote articles. Now for motivation, the students and teachers are creating projects. The student at the beginning creates a project that will go through all the material. And then the teacher is there to aid them along the way. They're not just creating this project for a score. They're creating it for criticism by the community. Now this is the 42nd issue of Foxfire. I don't know if you can see it. It says enjoying the journey. And that means the enjoying the education. And that's really important. They also make books for that. Do not let testing companies tell teachers what to teach. <coughs> they are not the teacher. Do not, let the, do not let them tell learners what to learn because they are not the student. And do not let them run the school systems because they have no business in our future. Thank you. Parents are concerned about the problems in education resulting in classroom size. So let me ask you a question. Would you rather learn to go to college and live a rich, healthy life or live a horrible life being a hobo, begging for food and money, no home, nothing to live for. So if you want to live, a, to live a good, rich, and healthy life, then listen to this. This is about classroom size. It should be smaller so they won't be a lot of arguing or talking and more room. And the best thing I can think of is you can listen to better to the teacher. An article, public reviews, View.com. It states that many areas of the country are facing classroom side classrooms that are busting out at the seams. A report and need uh, today, two years ago, discussed how schools had no choice but to lift all classroom size limits to accommodate students with the faculty. The school system could afford to keep. More recent, more recently, Fairfax County in Virginia has been looking into proposals to increase classroom size in the face of significant budget cuts. All of these facts support the fact that class size is a problem because they are they are they are problems in class size that schools are not trying to fix. We, the parents, need to help our students with the problem of the too many students in the classroom and can't hear the teacher or too much talking in. Or the biggest problem, too much bullying. Is this a problem for, for large, large classroom size? Too much for our students? We need to think about what they need to get good grades and get into their dream college. Large class size is a problem. What about too much arguing from both the students and the teachers? With the students, with students' disrespect, the most possible reason that the students are becoming disrespectful is most likely because they're being bullied. And the teacher doesn't see or hear it. The best thing we can do for our, for our kids, the students, is listen to the problems in their class. And decide what is it about. But with smaller classes, we can identify the person who is causing the problem at the time it happens. The thing is, I, I respect the other claim that we need larger classroom size because there's not enough teachers to be able to teach a lot of students. 
The solution to the problem that I can think of is to make a fundraiser to lower the classroom size enough to help my fellow students and the people who care about them. Get them the education and the help they deserve. We need to think about the students and parents, about their complaints, also about the other stuff that is going on distracting the kids. In the news today, parents are complaining about overcrowded schools. So there you have it. The problem at hand, resulting in cl large classroom size, is not good in teaching our students. We need smaller classroom size to help our kids slash students get the education they deserve. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope you support me and what I'm trying to say. Wonderful, wonderful job. Remember when we were kids, family members, and we had to give a speech? We were probably quaking in our boots and we're sh shaking and we're, we're, we're sweating. Did you see that in our students today? They were very well poised and uh, excellent job to, to all of them. And then these are our future educa educators, hopefully. Um, education uh, policy makers, perhaps. I can I see a lot of them in the audience. So um, I want to thank uh, not only our students, but also our judges for coming out today to help us with this. Our students. So, uh, let's just thank our family members for being here for support. Thank you so very much uh, for, for being here today. Uh, oh, I love their And I have a stand there, and our judges really, really were very impressed each and every one of the students. Um, and they, it's, oh, it took us a little bit of time there. So, um, we're really excited to honor all of you. Remember, if you're here today, you were the winner of your whole team. And that's something to be very proud of. So, I want to get in the picture. I want to make sure I got you as well.